Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. The Hebrew word to remember is a significant one. I've shared with you many times that that phrase to remember usually is in a context that relates to the covenant. And when God remembers his covenant with his people, God moves in a restoring way. God achieves those things that bring about a change in our life. And we need to know that there are times that we too need to remember the faithfulness of God. We need to remember it and we need to share it with others and especially with that next generation. And to see what I'm alluding to, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Yehoshua, the book of Joshua and chapter 4. Now, last week, we saw that God moved to bring the people of Israel into the land of Canaan. They had spent 40 years in that wilderness. And those who did not believe, those who were, were under the influence of Egypt, those died out in that period of time in the wilderness. There was a new generation, a very important concept, that next generation that became primarily the ones that inherited the promise of the land of Israel. And again, when we see the children of Israel taking possession of the land, that is a paradigm for ultimately God's people, both Jew and Gentile, taking possession of the kingdom, entering in and receiving those kingdom benefits. So what we studied last week, gives us a kingdom perspective and principles that we need to apply to our life, and so too in this study this evening. So with that said, look again at that fourth chapter of the book of Joshua, and notice what it says, verse 1. And it came about just as all the nation ended to pass over the Jordan. So it speaks about what God did when the children of Israel, all of that nation, passed through, crossed over the Jordan River, and now we're in the promised land. They took possession. They inherited what God had promised. And we see an interesting thing. Once again, instead of calling them the children of Israel, if you look, it says, and it came about just as or when all the nation. And it's kol kol ha-goy. Why the term goy? Meaning a people. We learned last week. When Israel's called a goy, usually a word that reflects a, a, a Gentile or another nation. But when God uses that term in regard to the children of Israel, it is a message to think about what God promised Abraham, that the people who would come from him would become Goy Gadol, a great nation. So here we see that term being used in order, and we see it prophetically as well, when God is moving to fulfill his promises, his covenantal obligations to his people so god has moved he has promised and now he has kept that promise with the people crossing over the jordan river and notice the emphasis kol hagoi all the nation verse one the second part and the lord said to yehoshua saying take for yourselves from the people 12 men one man one man from every tribe so 12 individuals but not just any 12 
each of these have to represent one for each of the 12 tribes of israel now again 12 we hear that and we think about the 12 tribes we hear 12 we think about the 12 disciples in the new covenant that yeshua chose but what needs to be emphasized is the number 12 and we see that in the study of the book of revelation in chapters 21 and 22 when we speak about that final kingdom condition and how prevalent that number 12 is in those two chapters 12 is a kingdom number israel is a kingdom word so these things have kingdom implications once more he says take verse 2 for yourselves from the people 12 men one man one man from a tribe verse 3 and they command them saying now this is that they should be commanded and joshua was to say take for yourselves from the midst of the jordan so the jordan river is going to be emphasized this crossing and he says take for yourselves from the midst of the jordan and then we have the term me matzav now here the word matzav has to do with the place the location where the the priest stood when they were holding the ark standing in the water and then the water moved away and what it says here very carefully from the standing location of the priest's feet and he says he established this is what joshua was called to do to establish 12 stones now again he says establish it means to set up what's being done is that a memorial is being made to this crossing and we're going to see that the purpose is memorial from that same word the score to remember and to remember the faithfulness of god within that that covenantal context that god's going to keep his word and and notice what's going to be instructed by joshua to say to the people concerning this look at the end of verse 3 where it says and you shall pass over them with you meaning as you pass over you should take them with you and you shall set them at the place of lodging now in hebrew it's the word malone malone in modern hebrew is a hotel but it's simply the location of where the children of israel lodged when they crossed over so a memorial is going to be set up to this this significant event so set them in the place of lodging where uh uh, you lodged in it that that night verse 4 and joshua called to 12 men whom he established from the children of israel one man one man from a tribe now that is repetitive that's what we're told and the point of this this repetition is to show that and to emphasize that joshua obeyed god exactly so what's being emphasized to us is how joshua was a man who did exactly what god told him to do so repetition of this term speaks to the faithfulness of joshua to carry out by word exactly what god had told him to do verse verse 5 and joshua said to them pass over before the ark of the lord your god into the midst of the jordan and lift up for yourselves every man a stone and place it upon his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the children of israel so what's happening is the people as we saw at the end of chapter 3 all the people crossed over 
but the priests were still standing in that same location and before they moved what happened before they moved we see this event taking place where Yahshua is commanded to choose 12 men to go back to the place where the priests are remember the waters have subsided they have parted they have been been built up in one location as a great mound a heap of water and therefore they are told these 12 men to go to pick up each man a stone 12 stones in total representing that number 12 the the tribes of israel put it upon his shoulder and to do something with it look now if you would to verse 6 on account that there should be this sign now the word that begins verse verse 6 laman is a word of purpose so god has a purpose in telling yahushua to do this this memorial to make this testimony again verse 6 on account that there should be this sign in your midst why for your sons they shall ask tomorrow saying what are these stones for you so what is the purpose of these stones and notice it has an emphasis your sons an emphasis on the next generation i've shared previously i want to emphasize it now whenever there is a reference in the bible to that next generation as seen as your sons that usually brings the scripture into a specific context and that is a kingdom context and the message for us here is this that we need to remind that next generation our children of the faithfulness of god that god keeps his promises that god moves in the people's life to to move them he moves to move us to fulfill his will that god is dependable and that this is simply a testimony so once more notice what it says verse verse six and it shall come about literally on account of that there should be this sign in your midst for when your sons should ask tomorrow saying and tomorrow simply means in the future what are these stones for you what do they relate unto you you shall say to them now verse 7 you shall say to them when the waters of the jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the lord as it passed in the jordan the waters of the jordan they were cut off and and it shall come about that these stones should be for a memorial for the children of israel and then we have this very interesting expression ad olam now this means many bibles will say forever but this phrase ad olam has to do with a kingdom implication that this has kingdom relevance so he says the people need to remember this this act that god did something god is faithful to fulfill his promises and god moved miraculously to bring it about and notice we saw this last week we're seeing it this week that there's an emphasis upon the ark of the covenant that that testimony of the lord whenever the ark is mentioned it represents two two concepts one the presence of god secondly the commandments of god and we can state that another way the law of god and what it tells us is that god brings the people into the land in order to do his will of course there's that inherent relationship between the commandments of god and the will of god so god is moving mightily his presence is with the people in order that they carry out his purpose now if we put this within a salvation context god has saved us in order that we carry out 
his purposes. And it's his commandments that reveal what his purposes are. The character that we should have, the things that we should be doing in order to develop that character. It just doesn't happen overnight. Yes, anyone who's in Messiah is a new creation, but that tells us the potential that we have being made anew. Now we can submit to the instructions of God. When we study the Old Testament paradigms, first, the exodus from Egypt. What is that? Redemption. After being redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, the children of Israel went forth in order that they could be equipped equipped with God's revelation his word at Mount Sinai and God wanted to bring about a change at Mount Sinai among the people to put them in a new supernatural condition the people rebelled against that but in order that they would carry out the will of God that they would not sin but the people rejected that but now we the new covenant people having been equipped with the holy spirit now we are in the position only us in order to do the purposes of god to fulfill the righteousness of the lord and that's why although we're not under the law meaning we're not under its judgment its condemnation we as believers are the only one who can utilize the law of god in order to demonstrate righteousness see the purpose of the law is not to save us one aspect of the law is that it shows us our need to be saved the law also reveals the foundational principle for being saved and that is faith abraham believed he had faith and the outcome was it was credited to him as righteous and now being redeemed by the blood we are in the position to walk to behave righteously to bear testimony to fulfill his will this is what we're learning in this this passage of scripture so look again at verse 7 and you shall say to them when the waters of the jordan they were cut off from before the ark of the covenant of the lord when it passed in the jordan the waters of the jordan were cut off and there should be these stones for a memorial to the children of israel forever meaning unto a kingdom there's kingdom relevance in that verse 8 and they did thusly who did the children of israel did this just as joshua commanded and the the 12 stones they lifted up from the midst of the jordan just as the lord spoke to joshua for the number of the tribes of israel and that number is of course 12. and then it says here and they caused them to pass with them to this lodging place and they set them there now it's emphatic that word there the place and the message is simply this this lodging place which we're going to talk more about next week and the week after this lodging place is a location of faithfulness i want to say that again remember that because in the next few weeks this concept this statement is foundational this lodging place where the children of israel stayed after crossing the jordan river is of great significance it is a place that manifests testifies to the faithfulness of god we're going to see how the people are going to respond to the faithfulness of god in another few weeks so this place is being emphasized they put this memorial these 12 stones in that location now look at verse 9 and the 12 stones joshua he set up he established in the midst of the jordan under and it's the stones that were in the midst of the jordan underneath the standing location of the feet of the priests 
the ones who carry the ark of the covenant so joshua he took from the midst of the jordan these stones again exactly where the priests who bore the ark of the covenant they stood and it says and they were there unto this day meaning when when the children of israel anytime they went there they could see this testimony of god's faithfulness and remembering god's faithfulness is a very important part of this transition experience what transition to go from this world which is synonymous with the wilderness the desert the hebrew term midbar now we are in in a spiritual sense believers we are in that that midbar and what is god teaching us in this midbar this current condition what he taught them for 40 years trust me depend upon me make yourself reliant upon me god's never going to disappoint us he's never going to forsake us he's never going to fail us and we need to remember and here's the key we need to remember the faithfulness of god in the midst of this transition because there's coming a time when we are going to be called to be brought from this world into the kingdom of god and this word forever can mean unto this world unto this world means unto the ceasing of this world and what's after this world a kingdom experience one way of thinking that when i die it's not if i die it's when i die my my soul that's been redeemed by the blood of messiah one day is going to be separated from this body and that is the spiritual definition of death now in one sense when that happens if i should die before the the blessed hope the rapture then my soul is going to be in the presence of god and that's a wonderful experience but it's not a kingdom experience in the fullest sense that's not until the new jerusalem now there is that also this transition that's coming for believers to be passed through collectively in the last days that remnant that's still alive they're going to pass through this world this world's coming to an end remember what what messiah taught matthew 24 verse 14 it is necessary that this gospel of the kingdom be preached to all nations as a testimony unto them and then the end will come and this end is a transition we're going to see why a transition is important in a few minutes in the midst of this transition and i personally believe that we are seeing things take place today that lets us know prophetically that we are approaching this time of transition now it may be a few years off it may be a decade off or a few decades we don't know but we are drawing near to that times they are changing changing significantly and changing rapidly and everyone who has eyes of faith can see this what's taking place throughout the world in all nations is some just really striking changes that that cause us to think what's going on how is it that this world is so confused confused about how many genders there are is a a a man can he become a woman can a man give birth ridiculous things that people are arguing and attesting as fact against reality all of this is that spirit of delusion that comes about because of rebelliousness because people do not love the truth of god they reject the truth of god and here's the principle when you reject god's truth you are inviting deception into your life that is a principle that god has set up we could think of it this way as a spiritual law you reject truth you are going to be deceived by the enemy so here god is saying as this transition becomes more and more at hand we need to remember the faithfulness of god 
that he is faithful to supply and move miraculously in order to bring us into the fullness of that kingdom experience this is what god is telling the people so look again at where we left off look if you would again to to verse verse 10 and the priests that carry the ark the one standing in the midst of the jordan and they stood there until the finished of everything which the lord commanded joshua having spoken to the people so those priests who carry the ark they were in the water of course the water dried up the people all of them passed through but the priest the one who carries the ark very important how that is repeated over and over and over in chapters three and four they were still in their location when joshua heard the commandment from the lord to send those 12 men one man one man from every tribe in order to take up a stone and this would be a significant stone place it upon the shoulder and carry it out and place it in the place of their lodging as a memorial as a testimony to the faithfulness of god and we read here again in the middle of verse 10 according to all what what moses commanded joshua and it says here and they quickly the people quickly pass so what moses and the reason why moses is mentioned at the end of verse 10 is that all that that moses when he realized he wasn't going to be the one that brought the people into the land this fulfillment he commanded joshua some things one of which don't go to the right or the left but remain accurate perfectly accurate on the instructions of god so this is being done again all of verse 10 and the priests which carried the ark were standing the ones who stood in the midst of the jordan until all this thing was completed which the lord had commanded moses speaking to the people and what 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 the lord had commanded joshua to speak to the people just as according to what moses commanded joshua and it says the people hurriedly with emphasis they they passed over now verse 11 and it came about just as or the word can be when all the people ended to pass so they completed passing over crossing the jordan river it says the ark of the lord pass and the priests before the people now this is simply another emphasis about the ark of the covenant how once more at the end it too passed before all the people there is a strong emphasis on the ark of the covenant and two things we need to be reminded of this two things are being emphasized the ark the presence of god and the commandments of god now i realize when we look in the book of hebrews other things are said concerning what's inside the ark that's fine but from the position of the old testament the position of what was revealed what would have been the situation here we are told that the tablets are in the ark of the covenant so the presence of god and the commandments of god and these two are inherently related we experience the presence of god when we are upholding when we are applying when we are following the instructions of god his commandments verse verse 11 and it came about when all the people completed to cross over then it says and the ark of the lord cross and the priests before the people verse 12 and the sons of reuben the sons of god and the half tribe of manasseh they passed over and notice what it says chamushim what's chamushim means to be armed meaning to be ready for battle 
Now, we were told back in the book of Deuteronomy, these two and a half tribes, Reuben and God, and the half tribe of Manasseh, they wanted to stay on the other side of the Jordan River. Moses agreed with the condition. The condition is when you pass over, when all of us pass over to take possession of the land through war, that you have to cross with us. You can leave your wife, your children, your possessions on the eastern side of the Jordan in the land that that you want, Gilead, that good land for what they were doing. They were cattlemen. But he says you have to be participating in the taking of the land. And to show faithfulness, they passed over. And they are the only ones that we are told about who are armed, ready for battle. And this just shows the faithfulness, the obedience of the people. It says, they passed over before the Lord for war unto or over the plains of Jericho. Let's do one more verse. Verse 14. Be'yom ha'hu. Now, that is an expression that I've emphasized many times, we see it very frequently in prophecy. Be'yom ha'hu means in that day. And when that expression appears, it is an expression of judgment. Be'yom ha'hu speaks about judgment day. And what we see here is, and the parallel is so important. When the children of Israel will see this in the weeks to come, When they took possession of Jericho and the other cities, they did so by war. And we're going to see that there's going to be a battle, both spiritual and physical, in the last days for the land of Israel in order for the kingdom to come. And that's why I've said over and over, there is no establishment of the kingdom of God without the outpouring of God's judgment. There is going to be a battle that takes place. And that battle ultimately is going to be between the children of Esau, meaning Edom, and the children of Jacob, meaning the Jewish people. And we learn something. We learn that all the nations of the world are going to side with Edom. And today, in modern times, Edom represents the palestinian people so more and more we can expect and we see this already that there's going to be a preference among the nations of the world all the nations of the world to side with the palestinians against the jewish people why because the palestinians that spirit of esau is always against the fulfillment of god's will and it's all about the land And that's why if someone says the land has no more relevance, these false teachers also believe the Torah has no more relevance. Now, I've said many times, without a temple, we can't keep the Torah. But that does not mean that the commandments of God don't have relevance. There's no temple, but under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, We ought to study the commandments and apply the truth of that commandment, the intent, the spirit of the law to our life in order that we fulfill the righteousness of the law, doing so in the newness of the spirit. For what purpose? For the glory of God to be manifested. And it's only when we're walking in this way. And that's why Paul says in Romans chapter 7, he says, The law is spiritual. It's not for the carnal man. It's for the redeemed man. And that's why we have such a problem today among many believers. Because they are taught the law is done away with. No more relevance. You don't have to know it. And most in the church don't know the law. And part of the law is the festivals of Israel. You can't study the book of John and understand the revelation of the gospel of John without knowing the festivals. And there's so many things that enhance our understanding of the new covenant, that is the New Testament, when we understand the Old Testament. 
to say that the law is no longer relevant means you cannot understand the truth that of the gospels and the epistles in the in the new testament so look again at verse 14 where it says on that day the lord exalted yeshua in the eyes of all of israel now think back what was it that that brought about god desiring to do that to lift up joshua well i hope you know the answer joshua obeyed god to the the specific commandments that god gave to him and not only what god gave to him but what moses gave to him we see submissiveness because joshua did all that moses commanded him in the name of the lord that is to emphasize joshua recognizing godly authority first of all in the person of moses moshe rabbeinu and then secondly as he hears god's voice and god's instructions directly it was only because joshua was submissive that joshua was selected and it's only that submissive spirit that brought about the fulfillment of god's will for the people of god so look again verse verse 14 our our last verse in that day the lord exalted joshua in the eyes of all of israel and they feared him meaning they gave to him priority just as they feared moses all the day of his all the the days of his life so we see that there is a cons- a word is a consistency with 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 joshua like was with moses that the people recognize they were under the authority of god well let's bring this to a conclusion if we're going to be pleasing to god we have to be people that are brought under his authority let me say that differently we need to be people that submit that we put ourselves in submissiveness before the word of god and when we have that submissive desire that desire to obey the word of god what does that do that is an invitation to the holy spirit to move mightily in our life for what purpose what did we learn in order that the purposes of god might be a reality in your life and my life and there's nothing better because when we are fulfilling the purposes of god god is going to bring us into his will and when we're in the will of god this is where we receive all that provision and we we begin to experience the promises of god being realized in our life all of what we're studying from the book of joshua it has great relevance for us today in order that we walk in obedience and submissiveness to our lord and savior messiah yeshua well i'll close with that until next week when we press on in this fourth chapter may god bless you shalom from israel Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.